In this tutorial for the Layered Earth, we will go through a brief overview of the program's icons and how to use them. Here we are in the main opening screen for the Layered Earth. Let's go down to the lesson level, clicking once, twice, third time, and finally a fourth time takes us down to the first part of the Formation of Volcanoes lesson. This section of the lesson is called What is a Volcano? Clicking on the back button here takes us back to the page last visited, while clicking on the back button again takes us back one more page or for a total of two pages. Clicking on the forward button here moves us forward one page, clicking on it again moves us forward another page, and we can see that we are back at the lesson level that we were originally at. Over here to the right, in the main view panel, we can see that we have a series of navigation controls. The upper icon here allows us to move the view on the screen. We can move the view to the left, to the right, we can move it forward, we can also move it backwards. The minus icon here allows us to zoom out, the plus icon allows us to zoom in. The next two icons with the curved arrows allow us to rotate our view. We can rotate our view to the right, we can rotate our view to the left. The final two icons allow us to tilt the view. We can tilt the view right down to the horizon level, or we can tilt the view 90 degrees so that we are directly above the terrain surface. In the left panel here we have a graphic of an erupting volcano. Clicking on it produces a larger image over here in the main view panel. Clicking on the X icon here in the upper right closes this image and returns us to our globe view underneath. Clicking on the home icon returns us to our opening earth guide page. Finally, clicking on the reset button up here in the upper toolbar returns us to our default globe view. Clicking on the measurement tool here presents us with four options. The first one is the line tool. It draws a line for us on the globe surface. As long as we have our cursor over one of the control points, we can see that further information is presented about this line and the terrain that it covers, including the length of the line. As long as the line tool is active, we can continue to draw a series of lines. Clicking on the hand icon up here turns off the measurement tool. Clicking on the tool icon again makes our control points active. Right-clicking here, one of the control points, allows us to delete an individual line or all of the shapes that have been drawn on the screen. Let's delete all of the shapes. Our next measurement tool here is the square. Let's draw the square right here. And again, if our cursor is over one of the control points, information is presented about the square. We can change the size of the square. We can move the square. Our third tool is the circle tool, and it does exactly the same thing but produces a circle. Again, if we move over to one of the control points and right-click, we can delete all of our shapes. Our fourth measurement tool is the polygon tool. The polygon tool is a little bit different from the other tools. If we right-click one of the control points, we can see we have the option of adding in a control point. There it is right there. Let's change the shape of the polygon. Let's go here and add in another control point. There we go. In this fashion here, we can use the polygon tool to make any shape that we wish here. Let's right click here, let's delete the polygon, and let's turn off our measurement tools. Clicking on the flat map icon here switches from the globe view to a flat map view. Let's just zoom out here so that we can see the entire Earth. We have several options available to us. We have the original latitude and longitude. We also have the Mercator projection. We have sinusoidal projection. And finally, we have the modified sinusoidal projection. Clicking on the globe icon here restores us to the globe view. Let's zoom in here. This icon also gives us an option of a stereo 3D view here. 3D glasses, of course, will be necessary in order to see the distance perception that this view allows. Let's go back to the regular globe view. There we are. Finally, the last button here in our toolbar is the media view button. 
It allows us to see the last image, movie, or interactive animation that we had, la that we had seen in our main view panel here. Clicking on it here, we can see that we have a, the view here of the erupting volcano that we had earlier looked at. Let's close this view. And over here to the right, we can see we've got a search box here. Let's enter in Grand Canyon. Hit Enter. And we can see a little box over here appears. And there is our result of our search. Let's double click on that. And away we go to the Grand Canyon. Down here in the bottom left hand corner, we've got three more icons. We can see the first one says search right here. It does exactly the same thing as the search box does up here. To close the search box, just click on that here. Clicking on it again opens it. Let's close it. The next one says labels. We'll come to that in a second here. Let's go to the last one here which says layers. This view right here presents us with a listing of the various data sets that are available within the program. Let's reset here and go back to the globe view. Let's have a look at some of these data sets right here. For example, let's click on the geophysics right here. Underneath that we've got crustal magnetic field. Let's click on that right here. And now if we click on the box here, we'll make that active. And we can see that what we've got over here in the globe is we've got the magnetic striping uh, at the bottom of the Earth's oceans. At this time right here, let's go to the labels icon right now. Let's click on the labels icon. If we click on plus, a label will appear here. Let's move the label over here so that it's over Iceland. Let's add in some content here. Let's add in the word Iceland. There we can see the word Iceland appears. If we go to the position tab right here and click on lock position, let's go back to our screen here. As we rotate it, we can now see that this label here is locked into position with Iceland right here. Let's say we wanted to save this particular configuration so, so that we could come back to it at any particular time. The way we do that is by going up here to Favorites. At the very top where it says My Favorites, let's right click. Let's highlight My New Favorite File here. And let's type a name for this. Let's call it Magnetic Striping. Hit Enter. We now have saved this particular configuration. To show that, let's just go back to Earth Guide. Let's reset everything. Let's close the layers as well. Now we go back to Favorites. There we can see there's Magnetic Striping. If we click on that right here, we can see that the main view panel changes to our saved data set. Finally, up here in the left hand side where it says full screen, if we click on that, our main view panel becomes full screen right here. Hitting the escape button will return this back to our normal view.